In this network, we've been told to subnet 192.168.1.0/24 into four subnets. In other words, we need a subnet for site one, site two, this serial link, and this serial link. Now we haven't been told to use a slash 30 mask on the serial links. We'll do that in a separate video. So all we need to do at this point is take 192.168.1.0 slash 24 and subnet that into four subnets. Now when we look at a network address such as 192.168.1.0, we need to determine which part is the network and which part is the host portion. Currently, this portion is the network portion. We can't change the network portion, but we can manipulate and change the host portion of the address. So in other words, what we can do is change this last octet. The reason why we can't manipulate the first three octets is because that's part of the network. 24 essentially means that we have 24 binary ones. Now you don't have spaces in an octet like this. I'm just doing it to make it easier to read. But essentially 24 means that we have 24 ones in the subnet mask. So that's 24 binary ones, which essentially equates to 255, 255, 255, zero. It's important that you know how to convert decimal to binary. This binary value equates to decimal 255. So the host portion of the address is once again, that portion, this portion is the network portion. We can't manipulate the network portion. But the host portion consisting of eight binary zeros can be manipulated. Now when we subnet, think of subnetting kind of like stealing bits. We're going to steal bits from the host portion. We need to work out how many bits are required for the number of subnets that we need. In this example, we need four subnets. Now when it comes to subnetting, there are two formulas that you need to know. Two to the power of n and two to the power of n minus two. This formula is used when we asked for subnets, which is what we've been asked in this question. This formula we need to use when we asked for a certain number of hosts. So if we were asked to subnet this subnet 192.168.1.0/24 and create as many subnets as possible, each having four hosts, we would use two to the power of n, where n is the number of bits that are required minus two. So if we needed to get four hosts, we would actually need two to the power of three minus two, which would be two to the power of three, which is eight minus two, which means that we would be able to have six hosts per subnet. We need to subtract two because of broadcast and network address, but we don't need that when asked for networks. Two to the power of two equals four, which is what we need for the number of subnets that we've been asked to create. This is the number of bits that we're stealing or using for the subnet portion. This is the number of bits that we would keep for the host portion. Now we're not using that formula, so I can basically scratch that from our example. So basically remove that. We are not using that formula in this example. This is the formula that we need. And once again, that's because we've been asked for subnets. We haven't been asked for hosts. Now two to the power of one equals two. That doesn't give us enough subnets. Two to the power of two gives us four subnets. Two to the power of three gives us eight subnets. Two to the power of four would give us 16 subnets. We don't need that many. We only need four subnets. So all we need to do is use two bits, which means we can steal two bits from the host portion for our subnet portion. So the host portion is now only six bits in length. The subnet portion is now two bits in length. 
So I'll write it like that. Once again, there's obviously no spaces here in binary, but that hopefully just makes it easier to read. So we're going to steal two bits from the host portion and allocate that to the subnet portion. So how many bits are part of the network and subnet? We've got our eight bits from our original example, an additional eight bits from our original example, plus eight bits, so that's 16, plus one, plus one. So in other words, this is now a slash 26 subnet. It's no longer slash 24 because we've stolen bits from the host portion for the network portion. So the first network that we have is 192.168.1.0. Look at these eight binary bits. To make it easier to read, notice we've got eight binary bits. I've just split them up with spaces here to make it easier to demonstrate which part is subnet and which part is host. But notice there are eight binary bits there. Eight binary bits equates to zero in decimal. So the network is 192.168.1.0 slash 26. That's our first network. Now what's the second network? The second network is 192.168.1. And what we do now is we just go through the different binary options. This is 00, zero. this is zero 01, this one would be 10, and this would be 11. One one. So those are the different binary options that we have. So if we look at this network, that second binary bit is set to a one. What does this equal to? This equals to 64 in a decimal. So the next network is 64. What does this equal? It looks like this, which equals 128. Now, as soon as you've worked out this second subnet, you can simply do addition by that number. So zero plus 64 is 64, plus 64 is 128, plus 64 is 192. But if you look at the binary, it's 128 plus 64, which equals 192. So there are our four subnets that we've been asked to work out in this example. So we've got four subnets. The first one is for site one, the second one is for the link between router one and the internet router. Third one is for site two. Fourth one is for the link between router two and the internet router. So the first subnet would be 192.168.1.0 slash 26. And I'll zoom in here to make it clearer. So that's our first subnet per our calculations. Second subnet is 192.168.164 slash 26. Third one is 192.168.1.128 slash 26. And the last one is 192.168.1.192 slash 26. So those subnets are the subnets that we worked out. So we need to now configure the network with this information. In the first step, we need to work out the subnets, but now we need to configure the routers per the instructions. So as an example, the last IP in this subnet should be configured on router one. Second last IP address should be configured on the switch. Third last IP address should be configured on the DHCP server per these instructions. We also need to configure a DHCP pool on the DHCP server. So I'm gonna start with the subnet first and get that working and then I'll move to the other subnets.